All right. Um, thank you once again, everyone, for being here with us this evening. Um, tonight, we are happy to welcome Trisha Heisey from Belco Credit Union for a crash course on credit workshop. Um, Trisha Heisey is the Business Development and Financial Education Representative for Belco Community Credit Union. As an employee of Belco for more than 38 years, she works closely with their valued business partners and is passionate about teaching financial education and helping people achieve their financial goals. She also invests her time teaching these everyday life skills to our local youth so they can grow up to become financially responsible adults. Trisha's vast network of people, businesses, and community give her the platform she needs to not only do her job, but also to make a professional and personal impact on everyone she meets. Um, without further ado, I'm going to pass the floor on over to Trisha while I share my screen really quickly. All right, can you see that? Might just take a moment to pop up. Yep, now I can. Great. Okay, awesome. We can go ahead and next slide, Emily. Okay, thank you so much for that warm introduction. And a um, little history about Belco. We started in 1939 as Bell Telephone's credit union. And then we went to a state charter credit union in 97. And then we also changed our name to Belco Community Credit Union when we uh, went to a community charter in 2005. So today we serve um, over 71,000 members or 800 plus million in assets. Okay, next slide. So our community charter, we proudly serve individuals and businesses in the following seven counties, as well as immediate family relatives of a Belco member. Okay, next slide. We have 14 branch locations um, in the Harrisburg area. We have a couple, um, Eisenhower, um, that's our operation center, Paxton and 40th on um, Jonestown, Allentown Boulevard, right next to Advanced Auto, um, as well as we have one in our Brady branch. We are UPMC's credit union. We've been their credit union. We just celebrated 28 years as their credit union. So now we're going to dive into uh, what is credit. So next slide, Emily. So credit is borrowed money that you can use for goods and purchases and that you're working with a grantor that you're agreeing to pay back the amount that you borrow plus any finance charges and fees with an agreed upon time. So the next slide, we're going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages. As you can see, yes, it's very um, convenient to borrow money. Sometimes I think it can be too convenient. Um, it gives you immediate personal purchasing power. So say, for example, you want to buy a car, it might take a significant amount of time to save up for a large purchase like that or a home. So it is nice that you're able to borrow funds to make those larger purchases. Obviously, you don't need cash. And it's a great opportunity to consolidate um, bills. Maybe you're paying higher rates and so forth than you're consolidating some um, credit cards. Maybe you're even taking out like a home equity loan to consolidate some outstanding bills. And then you can also um, deduct the finance charge in, on your taxes. So that can be an advantage there. The disadvantages are it is a loan. The interest rate, it may be a fixed rate or it may be a variable rate that may be adjustable. There may be additional fees. And sometimes, like I said, because it's convenient and sometimes easy, you might have a tendency to overspend. Um, it can also promote impulse buying. And, you know, when we talked about the advantages of consolidating bills, you just definitely want to make sure you don't consolidate them and then find yourself, um, you know, racking up credit card debt again. So you want to use it, you know, as, as a tool to your advantage. Okay, the next slide. We're going to talk about just some common loan terms. The finance charge is the amount of interest that you're paying over the life of the loan. The annual percentage rate determines how much finance charge that you'll be paying. And we're going to talk about your um, interest rate and how your credit score can impact um, that rate and what you pay. The amount borrowed is the principal amount that you're borrowing. Your total amount repaid is going to be your 
finance charge plus the principal is the total amount repaid. Down payment, sometimes you might be required to put a down payment down. It might vary, for example, on a mortgage, on a mortgage, you might have to put a certain amount down. You have to put 20% down in order to um, avoid having to pay like mortgage, private mortgage insurance. You might need to put a down payment down on a car. Um, then the total amount of each payment is determined by you know, the amount you're borrowing and the finance charge and then total number of payments. So for example, you take out a four-year car loan, you're gonna be paying back a set amount for four years after that time it's paid off. And then collateral required, if it's a car loan, they're gonna hold your car title. If it's a mortgage, they'll hold your, you know, the deed to the property, uh, might be stock secured, savings secured, or it could be simply you're just your signature. Okay, next slide. So quickly, uh, the different types of credit is revolving credit. So say you might have like a home equity loan or a line of credit loan that you have a credit limit or like a credit card is another good example where you have a credit limit and you can borrow, pay back, borrow, pay back, but it's ongoing, it's revolving. The installment credit is similar to, I explained like with a car or a mortgage where you take out a set amount of money for a certain time frame. For a mortgage, it might be 15, 20, or 30 years. And after making installment payments, then that loan is paid off. So you're not able to continue to borrow on that. Um, service contracts might be um, your cell phone bill and things like that, where maybe you're taking it out for a year and um, if you are, sometimes there's advantages, they'll, they'll send like teaser promo offers. And if you were to um, quit that contract prior to that service time, again, if it's a year term, you might be charged fees and so forth. So you wanna keep that in mind. Okay, next slide. So who checks your credit? There's a host of folks <clears throat> listed here. And you might think, well, why do landlords check it? Like I'm not buying a house, but you have to keep in mind that landlord might have a mortgage. They wanna make sure that you, you know, pay your bills on time. So they know they're gonna be paid their rent on time. Again, they might have a mortgage payment to make. And if they can't, if they're relying on your rent to make their mortgage payment and you're not able to pay that, and then they can't pay their mortgage, that's gonna impact their credit. So it is, is definitely important um, for landlords to check, you see the different utilities, cell phone companies, lenders, um, credit card companies, um, auto insurance, and even employers. And people are kind of surprised about the employers, but especially if you're working with cash, um, they will check your credit for a couple different reasons. Say, for example, if you are working in a financial institution, um, it may be if you're not able to handle your own you know, debt and manage your own money that maybe they, you wouldn't be able to help their customer or member handle theirs, but you are at, are at a greater risk for embezzlement. Not saying it's gonna happen, it's just saying that you're at greater risk for that. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> so the three major credit reporting agencies are TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. And we're gonna take a look at what actually is on your credit report on the next slide. <clears throat> so there's going to be identifying information such as your name, social security number, date of birth, your address, employer. Um, then there's also going to be the open accounts, the amount that you borrowed, if it's credit cards, consumer loans, auto loans, mortgages, and so forth. It shows, you know, if you pay on time, your balance, your credit limit, and if there are any late payments um, that show up to 30 days or more late. If there are any closed accounts, maybe you've paid off a card loan and that's gonna show as a closed account. If there are any collection accounts, that also shows, for example, it might be medical bills, rent, um, things like that that have been turned over for collection. There's also inquiries that will show. Now there's two types of inquiries. There's a hard inquiry, and then there's a soft inquiry. 
So hard inquiry is any time that you're, um, you're going out, maybe you're shopping for a car, you're taking out a credit card, and they're running your credit to see if they can approve that loan. That's going to impact your um, credit score. And we'll talk about credit scores in more detail. But then there's what's called soft inquiry. If you're checking your own report or, you know, you might, a lot of times you'll get like credit card offers in the mail and things like that. When they run like a pre-qualifier pre -qualifier like that, that's a soft credit. So that will not impact your score. Okay. The consumer statement too, if, if there is any information real quick, um, say maybe there's a, um, something you wanted to make note or a comment on there that you can put, uh, may not exceed 100 words, but maybe you need to explain why something is showing behind or something like that. You can put comments in there on the um, consumer statement. Okay. How long does information remain on your credit report? Inquiries up to two years. You can see the um, late payments, collection accounts, um, that'd be like student uh, collection accounts, foreclosures, chapter 13 bankruptcy is on for seven years, and then chapter seven is on for 10 years. And what to look for in your credit report. So, you know, I told you initially uh, it's going to have your identifying information. So you want to make sure that that information is correct, that that is your social security number and that's your name. It can get very confusing sometimes if there's like a junior, senior, um, you want to make sure that the, the information is yours. Um, if there's any unfamiliar names or addresses, anything like that, you want to make sure that you took out that loan and there's, there's not information on there that you did not authorize. And again, we're going to talk about credit scores, <coughs> excuse me, but on your credit report, it does not include your credit score. There is a, um, it's called myfico.com where you can do uh, answer questions and it can give you um, a range of what your score is based on those answers. You can pay for your score, but it is not included on it. Um, be wary too of companies that tell you that they'll give you your score for free because a lot of times they'll charge you in other areas for other ancillary services. Um, and if you do see fraud on there, make sure you do. You report it to your um, lender. You report it to the credit bureau as well as place a fraud alert. Typically, when you are placing a fraud alert on one of those three agencies, it typically then spills over onto the other two agencies. And we're going to talk about why it's so important, again, um, to make sure that you check your credit report and how to do that. So the next slide is going to show you, you can go to annualcreditreport.com and you can get one free credit report from each of those three agencies a year. So sometimes we'll recommend our members for the first time, get them from each of the three agencies and then after that, stagger them like one every three or four months. That way you can see if there's any information, you know, popping up or any loans that you did not take out, but now that are on your report. So it's just a good way to sporadically look at that information throughout the year. Um, I have a whole presentation on ID theft. So it's, um, it's super important to check that information to make sure, again, there's there's none, nothing on there that um, is inaccurate. And again, you can go on annualcreditreport.com or you can um, you know, call or request it by mail. <clears throat> okay, next slide. So why is, oops, back one up, Emily. <clears throat> Thank you. So why is good credit important? Your credit score is going to determine what you can buy when you can buy it and how much you're going to pay for something. So when I talk about um, credit, when I go to high schools, I'll ask the students, how many of you are looking forward to the day when there's no more report cards and they just can't raise their hand fast enough? But I tell them you're going to get a report card the rest of your life. Just like an A is good in school, 
and A is good on your credit score. So that credit score, again, is gonna be with you for the rest of your life. And it's really important because I'm gonna show you a couple different examples of how just that score is gonna impact how much your payment is and how much you're gonna pay for something. So again, just like an A is good in school and A is good on your credit report. So the next slide shows a picture of a car, it's just a used car, 2013 Ford Focus for $14,000. So if you had that same car and two people, you, maybe you and a friend are buying it, um, the next slide will show you if you have good credit, someone that's paid their bills on time versus maybe your friend, um, you know, they went through college, took out all these credit cards and didn't pay them back and came out of college in debt and um, you know they're struggling to make payments and you've already paid off one used car. So it shows you for $14,000 for four uh, years or 48 months, someone with good credit could be paying 310 a month. Someone with poor credit, their interest rate is gonna be much higher. So that impacts their payment because of the finance charge and it's $367 a month. So for four years, the person with poor credit is paying $57 more a month or almost $2,800 over the life of the loan for the same type of car. And we're gonna show you different examples of, you know, the higher that you're borrowing, the more that number um, <clears throat> continues to grow. The other thing I try to tell students is, um, or, or young adults when they're just starting to um, take out loans and things like that and trying to build their credit. You know, it's kind of tough. It's like that uh, vicious cycle when you're applying for a job and they want say a degree and credit or, or, or I mean experience. It's like, well, how can I get an experience unless someone gives me the opportunity? Well, <clears throat> when you're first applying for credit, you're really at a 50-50 shot as to whether you're gonna pay that loan back. So you're at a higher risk. So that's why um, you're go probably gonna pay a higher rate. You're probably gonna have to have a co-signer and you're asking a lot of, you know, maybe a parent or a grandparent, even though we all wanna help our kids and grandkids to, um, co-sign for you because if for any reason you can't make that payment they have to and it might not be in their normal monthly budget to do so and if they can't that's going to impact their credit score um, and also uh, if maybe they go to apply for a loan maybe they're on a fixed income or something like that they might not be able to qualify for a loan because they have to take your payment into consideration. So those are things you just need to um, take into account. So the next thing is, so what is a credit score? It's this crazy complex mathematical model that evaluates different factors. And we're gonna go over those in more detail. Again, the higher the score, the better, the better it is. And then the next slide will show you that there's different tiers. <clears throat> And again, it goes through A on down. So that three digit number reflects your credit risk <clears throat> and likelihood of your repayment. And most um, lenders and Belco included, we use the FICO score and it stands for Fair Eyes a Company. And that is the most widely used. <clears throat> so let's take a look at what makes up the score. So payment history, as you can see there, <clears throat> is 35% of your total score is your payment history. So that's why it's so important to make sure that you're paying your bills on time because that's the larger, largest factor. The next one is amount owed, 30%. Um, it's also referred to as your capacity. So say for example, you have a $2,000 credit card limit. And if you're close to your limit or over your limit, that's gonna negatively impact your score. But if you pay off your balance each month or you stay under like 30% of your credit limit, that's gonna help improve your score. So 
some people, if they look at their credit report and they think, oh my gosh, like I haven't used these store credit cards in years, I'm just going to close them out. <clears throat> While one might think that's helpful because it doesn't look like, or it will now look like you don't have that outstanding debt, that will actually negatively impact your score and lower your score because now you've reduced your capacity. Also, some of those um, older store credit cards might have longer history than some of your new um, trade lines on your credit report. So again, if you wanna close out old credit cards, you just wanna make sure that um, you close them out slowly. And again, try to not, don't go over your credit limit, try to, you know, stay well under your credit limit so you have that larger capacity. <clears throat> You'll see um, new credit, so, you want to be careful too that you don't um, take out too much credit in a short period of time. For example, you don't want to go to you know three different stores and take out their credit cards because that's going to ding your score. Now, if you're shopping, say for a car, and you're getting this like they're pulling credit, you're say you're um, shopping at different dealers and they're pulling your credit. That's not going to ding your score as if you're going and applying for different credit cards. Same with a mortgage. You might be trying to get approved from different mortgage lenders. That's not going to impact your score as much. Your length of credit history is 15%. Then also that credit mix, where we talked about in the beginning of the different types of credit, that's going to look at um, if you have... Um, say an installment loan, such as a car loan or a mortgage, where it, you're paying it back over a certain period of time. Also, do you have a couple of revolving credit where you can borrow, pay it back, borrow, pay it back? So it's looking at the type of mix of your credit that you have out, outstanding. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> so what does not affect the score? Your debt ratio, which is your monthly expenses divided by your monthly income, your length or type of employment, your time on job or at residence, or your zip code. So those don't affect the score. But your debt ratio, the, um, the employment, and so forth, time on job, those are all factors that definitely go into a lender's decision making whether or not to approve that loan. Because if you're already, if you're overextended, it is not in the lender's best interest or your best interest to um, put you more in debt. <clears throat> also, what type of employment do you have? Is it seasonal? Is it temporary? Do you bounce from job to job? Those things they want to take into consideration because if you're, you know, having to make a loan payment year round, but you're only working six months out a year because it's seasonal, well, how are you going to make your payment the other six months? And then again, they want to see that you have st stability in your job. Okay, the next slide. <clears throat> so a couple things you want to take a look at when you're considering the cost of borrowing. Again, is the loan amount only borrow what you need. That, again, that's the principal amount. Um, you know, if you're borrowing to pay for a car, you know, we know it's not just the expense of the car. It's, you know, a big ticket item can be taxes and tags, um, you know, maybe extended warranty and different um, title fees and things like that. So if you have money in a savings account, utilize that. Try not to borrow too much or uh, above like the blue book value. Sometimes lenders will let you go a little bit above the blue book value in order to, you know, help you finance the cost of the, the taxes and tags and things. But you just certainly want to be careful because A, you're going to be paying interest on that <clears throat> higher principal amount. But the other thing is you don't want to come to a point where maybe you want to get rid of your car or you know, now it broke down and you need an engine and now you, you know, you just want to unload it and you're going to end up 
um, having a higher balance than what your um, vehicle's worth, and you still have to come up with that amount to pay it off. So you want to be super careful with that. Another um, big warning is a lot of times for student loans, you want to be careful not to borrow too much because again, you have to pay it back. <clears throat> you want to consider the interest rate. So, you know, you look at your credit card offers and things like that. Um, you want to take into consideration, are there fees? Uh, is there an annual fee? Is you know, if there is there a late payment fee? And I know we were just talking with the postal service, so short-handed and short-staffed. Some people don't get their bills all the time, or I'm sorry, they don't get their mail all the time. So you might not have your bills. You want to take that into consideration if you're, if you know, you're sending your payment. <clears throat> it might take a couple extra days to get there. So don't wait until the actual, you know, due date to send it out. You want to make sure they have it in plenty of time. And what is the term? Because we're going to show you too, um, you know, if you're just making minimum payments and so forth, you're extending the term, thereby um, paying a lot more in finance charge. <clears throat> okay, next slide. Okay, so here are some good examples on how that credit score um, may impact your credit card, um, your APR in this example. Or again, if you're shopping, looking at the different APRs. So the purchase amount is the same, $1,000 across the board. You can see the different um, finance charge APRs, 10, 15, 25. If you make that same monthly payment, take a look on that next line. The one it would take 29 months to pay back, 31 or 36 months or three years. And then look how much that impacts the finance charge. <clears throat> Again, because you're extending it out, it might seem like, um, or sometimes people just make the minimum and so forth, <clears throat> but look how much it really impacts their finance charge and then your total cost for what you're buying. <clears throat> so that's one thing where you really want to ask yourself like wants versus needs. So here's another example on credit card debt. So if you have 20,000 in credit card debt, at 18%, and you're only making that minimum payment. Now, that sounds great. It's like, oh, it's not that much a month. But by you only making that minimum payment, it's on that based on that 20,000, 18%, it's going to take you 30 years to pay that off. And look at that interest that accumulates. So that 20,000 in purchases it's going to end up costing you $70,225. And I'm sure by that time, you know, if you were buying clothes or shoes or whatever, I'm sure you're no longer, you know, trends come and go. And so you definitely uh, want to consider all these things, the cost of borrowing when you're buying things. I have a whole um, presentation on budgeting too. Okay. The next slide we're going to show you on yet, uh, what a mortgage is on a higher amount. So Diego, Angela. So look at those credit scores, compare them. That's going to impact the rate. Again, the higher the score, the less risk you are. So Angela, in this case, is paying a lower rate on a 30-year mortgage, 250000 You can see how it impacts the payment. And then over the 30 years, the price difference. And I think... Um, Emily, if you do one more, it should come up at the bottom. The good credit, yep, saved Angela $34,258. That is significant. And it all comes down to your credit score. That's why it's so important to, you know, build credit responsibly. Or, you know, if you have, um, if you've damaged your credit anyway, there's ways to help repair that. And I'm, I have some tips at the end. Okay. So a couple tips about um, smart credit, get an idea of what you're currently spending. If you don't have a budget, that's always a good starting point. Look at your spending habits. Again, is it a want or is it a need? Do you do impulse buying? Things like that. You want to prioritize your expenses and identify areas um, where you may be able to save. Review that plan. Try to automate things. That's so nice. That way you don't have to worry, you know, you get busy or maybe it's a holiday season and you're like, oh, I missed my payment. 
have it automatically deducted out of your account. Now, on the flip side, you want to make sure that you subtract it if it's coming out of your checking account so it doesn't cause you to um, have any checks returned for non-sufficient funds because that can be a whole snowball um, scenario as well. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple different debt payoff strategies and see if there's one that works for you. And then you can always look into a debt management plan if needed, whereas we partner with Green Path, and I'll tell you about that quickly, you know, as we um, close this out, but they can help you um, possibly contact your creditors and negotiate a lower um, APR so that will impact your payment. And a lot of times there is a fee for the debt management plan, but again, you're working with someone, they're helping to pay off <clears throat> your, your, um, your loans, your outstanding debt. And in the long run, what you have to pay out is typically a lot less that, that you're saving over the um, period of time and, and all the interest charge. So let's take a look at some of the different methods. The first one is the debt snowball method, where you'll start out with your smallest amount of debt, pay that off, take what the payment you were making on that one, add it to the next one, and then you keep going with that. So sometimes it gives you a really good feeling and it gives you that momentum that you're paying it off. Uh, you're, you're having one debt paid off and now you're able to apply that, um, again, payment to the next one and so on. So that's one method. Then there's the avalanche method where you're starting with the loan with the highest interest rate because we can see how the interest rate, um, that's on the next slide, Emily, we can see how that interest rate impacts your balance and so forth. So you're, again, taking the highest interest rate and then paying it off and then going to the next, the next highest rate and so forth. So the comparison between the two is on this slide. So again, smallest to largest, highest interest rate to the lowest. One might give you motivation. Um, it, you might be paying off your debt within 18 to 24 months. Uh, the other one, you're paying the highest interest rate first, so it might take longer for you to do that. And maybe you'll, you know, uh, just get frustrated and give up. But determine what works best for your situation because each situation can be unique. Okay, the next one. So different options to save money or repair credit. So I, and I can speak at Belco and I know there's other financial institutions that probably do the same thing, but we do saving secured loans or a saving secured credit card, Visa card. So some people might say, well, you know, if I had $500 or $1,000, I would just use it to, you know, to pay for the item. But if this is a great way to repair your credit or establish credit because you put that in your savings account. We put a hold on it. So you're using your savings as collateral. The interest rate is super cheap. Um, it's very low and you're still earning in your savings while you're paying down this debt. Um, so again, it's super nice. So for example, if you do a savings secured loan for $1,000, as you make payments on that, say for example, you only owe $400 now, that other 600 is available to you. So as you're paying it down and your balance is coming down, your money's becoming available to um, use that to you know, pay for other things. With a Visa card, because that's a revolving loan, they put the hold on there for that entire time unless you qualify at a later time for an unsecured Visa loan. But again, that is a great way of establishing money. Uh, I, and a great time to do that is tax refund time because you're getting money that you might not have had in your savings account. Again, you just put it there. We put a hold on it. Um, they'll, you make payments on that. and. It's a great way to, um, we lend you the money. And again, you're, you're making those payments. We talked about having them automatically deducted. Again, that's so convenient. If you have you know, direct deposit of your pay, we post it when we get it. So it's in your account you know, right away, usually a day or two before 
your parent or your um, typical pay, and then you can set up automatic payments so the money is transferred right to um, any loan payments. You can refinance loans or get credit cards at lower rates. Just be careful um, because there might be, you know, fine print there. Make sure you know you're not uh, refinancing, but then now you're going to have an annual fee and things like that. So just be careful with that. Sometimes there's teaser rates, and but sometimes it is a good deal for you. So just be careful. Um, again, maybe you're able to consolidate loans through a home equity line of credit that we talked about earlier. Um, the other thing I um, let people know is you definitely want to be careful and it's becoming more and more trendier for the buy now, pay later. For example, uh, we have a rental property. So we say we get we got carpeting for $3,000. They had a deal like no payment, um, no, or I'm sorry, no interest for 24 months. Okay. But you're making minimum payments throughout that time now. So that sounds great, but you have to be disciplined to pay it off within that promo period. So either pay more each month so you don't have such a large um, balance at the end or make sure that you pay off that balance from the end because after that 24 months is up the interest does not start accumulating after when that promo ends that interest uh, has accrued from the date of your purchase so now your three thousand balance three thousand dollar balance minus your minimum payments just say three thousand now might be five thousand because you had two thousand dollars of finance charge accrue that whole time trust me when i say Retailers like that are hoping you don't pay off that balance. So if you take advantage of those promo offers, make sure you're disciplined to pay it off before that promo time is up. Um, you want to keep paying down your balances, keep that debt to credit ratio low, that um, capacity that we talked about, how it impacts your score. Be careful, don't apply for credit too often because again, those inquiries and so forth impact your your score and make sure you take care of collection accounts. Don't just, you know, avoid them or ignore calls. If you have them, work with the work with them, even work with the lenders or creditors before they go to collection. Because a lot of times creditors don't want it, it to go to that um, resort as well because they're typically having to pay higher fees and so forth for it to, for it to a collector. So work with them. They, they might be um, willing to uh, settle for say $100 a month or $50 a month, whatever they agree upon, then they can't send you over to collection if they are have accepted that as your monthly payment. Okay, the next one. Above all, avoid using payday lenders. As you can see, payday lenders, they charge about $15 to $20 for every $100 borrowed. So as we talked about the different APR, based on that traditional APR of maybe like 2%, 18% that we talked about, look at the APR range on a payday loan, 391 to 521%. And they want to keep you in that cycle of oh, don't worry about paying it back. They're going to tack on more fees and charge you more interest. And it's something that sometimes is so hard to get a hold on. So avoid using payday lenders. Okay. So just a quick recap, and we could have gone, I could have talked more and more about lots of different things and smart buying decisions. But tonight we just learned some basics, you know, what is credit, some basic terms and um, what makes up the credit score what's on your credit report and how to access it. And again, what to look for, make sure there's no activity that's um, not authorized or could be fraudulent activity and ID theft and so forth. The true cost of credit. I really hope you, you know, took into account those different scenarios and how that APR can really impact your, your payment and what you're gonna end up paying for something. And this is such good information too to share with your kids because I know when I was a kid, it was like, oh, just write out a check. Now kids just think, just go to the ATM machine. They just think, you know, there's a cool machine that spits out money. They don't know 
that you have to have the money in the account, for example. So no, you know, communication is really key too. We talked about tips for paying off debt and for repairing credit as well. Okay, next slide. So this is the Green Path service I was telling you about. They can help with debt management, bankruptcy counseling to help avoid that, housing, financial assessments, student loans. They have a lot of um, wonderful recorded webinars as well. So they are a great resource and partner for us. We have a financial education page on our website as well. The next slide has the Green Path um, website and you can call it toll free. We also have a link on our website. Their, their website is available in Spanish as well. Okay, and then we, if there's any questions, I know um, Emily will stop the recording. And I also want to reiterate that, you know, when you're dealing with credit or finances, there might be some information that's, you know, of personal nature, that even with it not being recorded, you might be hesitant to ask. My contact information is at the end. So, you know, please feel free to reach out to me directly. If I don't have the answer, then I will make sure I get the answer or uh, direct you to someone that can help you with that. So if you do have a question, maybe you wanna key it in the chat or unmute yourself. Yeah, I, Emily, just wanted to, uh, I, I just wanted to make sure we get your, um, your contact information on the screen for the recording, Trisha, yeah. and I'm going to take take a second sure. to just say thank you so much um, for being here with us this evening and, and for sharing your expertise. Um, I know you are, have been doing this work for a long time and you're very passionate about it, and we really appreciate you taking the time um, and sharing, sharing what you know. Um, so thank you so thank very you. much.